After studying this module, you shall be able to know about what is physical evidence, its role in forensic science, steps to process physical evidence and different types of physical evidence in detail which can be encountered at the crime scene. First, the definition of physical evidence. Physical evidence is any material or entity that has an important role in the matter or the criminal case that finally resulted in the legal proceedings, intended to prove a fact in issue based on its demonstrable physical characteristics. Role of physical evidence in forensic science. Physical evidence plays an important role in the investigation of a crime. It all depends how many evidences are recovered and how much potential it has. The evidence left behind plays a crucial role in reconstruction of events. The physical evidence in itself cannot describe anything about what exactly happened. Nevertheless, this evidence has the ability to support or contradict statements given by eyewitnesses or the suspects. The information obtained from physical evidences recovered can also lead to the information and also confirms the reconstruction of a crime to a jury. Now processing of physical evidence. The processing of physical evidence collected by the crime scene investigator is a step by step process. The following are the stages to be followed while processing investigation of a crime. First is discovering physical evidence, recognizing physical evidence, examining physical evidence, collecting physical evidence, recording physical evidence, identifying physical evidence, packaging, conveying and storing physical evidence, exhibiting physical evidence in court and disposing of physical evidence when the case is closed. Now we shall discuss about the types of physical evidences. Various types of physical evidences are encountered at the crime scene. Few of them are mentioned below and discussed in detail. First blood, second semen, third saliva, fourth document, fifth explosive, sixth is firearms and ammunition. Other important physical evidences are fingerprints, DNA evidence, skeletal evidence, petroleum products, plastic bags, plastic rubber and other polymers, vehicle lights, wood and other vegetative matter. Now let us discuss few important physical evidences in detail. First blood. Blood is a bodily fluid in animals that delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic waste products away from those same cells. Blood is often encountered at many crime scenes, especially in heinous crimes such as murder, rape, suicide, hit and run cases, etc. Many potential details can be obtained from blood evidence regarding the crime scene, which can further be used in the investigation. DNA, proteins and cells are the important components of blood, which allows the laboratory to perform examination. Useful information can be obtained from blood. The examination can be done to determine source of origin, if the source of origin of blood is human or non-human, specific animal family, that is the specific animal family can be determined for non-human blood. Then next is exclusion and inclusion of possible suspects. If blood belongs to human origin, then it can be compared with the specimen blood for exclusion or inclusion of possible suspect. Second type of physical evidence is semen. Semen or the seminal fluid is an organic fluid that may contain spermatozoa. It is secreted by the sexual glands and other sexual organs of male or hermaphrodite animals and can fertilize female ova. In case of sexual offenses, when the perpetrator is male, then semen stains are usually encountered at the crime scene. The stains may be found on the body of victim, clothing, rags, upholstery, beddings and other sources also. The following are the few steps required while collection of seminal stains from the crime scene area. First, all the stain material under suspicion should be recovered carefully. 
in order to avoid cross contamination of evidences and to prevent their loss each item should be separately packaged all damp stains should be air dried the location of moist stain on the evidences itself must be marked because once air dried it may not be visible use clean paper spread it under the item to catch any kind of debris which may be dislodged during the drying process and between items hanging next to each other so as to avoid the possibility of the evidence getting contaminated avail assistance of forensic staff to recover the stains in case when semen stains are on object that cannot be easily submitted to the laboratory third type of physical evidence is saliva saliva is a watery secretion that is secreted by the salivary glands present in the mouth of animals human saliva contains 99.5% water and 0.5% of electrolytes mucus glycoproteins enzymes and antibacterial compounds saliva stains are not usually evident from a visual examination certain type of evidences frequently contains traces of saliva such as cigarette butt gum surface of envelopes chewing gum bite marks ski or nylon mask etc few points to be kept in consideration while collecting saliva evidence if the saliva stained object is transportable then it is advisable to submit the object intact and if in case it is not possible to transport the stained object example bite mark on a body then following points might be considered while collecting saliva stain first moisten a sterile cotton swab with distilled or tap water shake the swab to remove excess water gently swab the suspected saliva stain allow the swab to thoroughly air dry prior to packaging in a paper envelope and seal in order to collect the negative control select an unstained area and collect a sample in the same manner as described above this swab will serve as a negative control next type of physical evidence is documents section 3 of indian evidence act describes document as document means any matter expressed or described upon any substance by means of letters figures or marks or by more than one of these means intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of recording that matter the role of document examiner is to ascertain if the questioned sample originated from the same source as that of the known items followed by presenting their opinion on the matter in court as an expert witness a document examiner also determines what has happened to a document its absolute or relative date of production decipher information on the document that has been obscured obliterated or erased types of document examined documents play an important role in our daily lives including our business and personal affairs authenticity of almost any kind of document can be questioned in broadest sense a document is anything bearing marks signs or symbols which conveys message or meaning to someone it includes traditional paper documents things like graffiti on a wall stamp impressions or covert markings hidden in a written letter among other things etc any material or sheet of paper bearing handwriting or mechanically produced text such as a ransom note a forged check or a business contract is regarded as a document in other words it may be some material which is not normally thought of an as a document a forensic document examiner conducts examinations and comparisons which can be quite diverse the following examinations are usually carried out by a forensic document examiner first handwriting whether it is cursive printing and signatures typewriters photocopiers laser printers inkjet printers fax machines check writers rubber stamps price markers labor markers and printing processes also ink 
pencil, paper, alterations, addition, erasures, obliterations, indentation detection and its decipherment, sequence determination and physical matching, handwriting examination. Generally, there are three stages in the process of handwriting examination. In brief, they are analysis, comparison, comparison of questioned item against the known standard, then evaluation, and fourth, optionally, the fourth step consisting of verification or validation or peer review may also be there. Then various tools for document examination, excellent eyesight, hand lens, stereo microscope, electrostatic detection device, video spectral comparator, DocuBox Dragon, DocuCenter, and Raman spectrophotometer. Next type of evidences that we are going to discuss is explosives. An explosive material, also called an explosive, is a reactive substance that contains a great amount of potential energy that can produce an explosion if released suddenly, usually accompanied by the production of light, heat, sound and pressure. Or in other words, an explosive is a substance, maybe an element, a compound or mixture which is capable of exerting pressure on its surroundings on explosion or transformation. Forensic science plays a role in relation to explosives. Explosives are studied by forensic personnel mainly related to mass destruction episodes where bombs are used for illicit activities. The explosive residues collected from the crime scene are examined for many causes, especially in order to identify the explosive material, the source and intention of explosion. An explosive has many applications which are legal and do not cause harm to any animal or human being. Now next is legitimate uses. The legitimate use of explosives include blasting rocks in cases of mining, explorations of oil fields, spacecraft and satellites, for construction purposes of roads and railway line etc., in fireworks display and may also be used as military explosive. Now the illegitimate uses of explosives. The criminals are using the explosives for causing destruction to individuals or a nation by blasting bombs. The illegitimate use of explosive cause high destruction to the integrity of any nation and is severely punishable under Indian Penal Code, Explosive Act and the Explosive Substance Act. The some common examples of explosives are RDX, TNT, TETN, ANFO and dynamite etc. Forensics plays an important role in the investigation of explosions where explosive substances or materials are the main ingredients. Explosives can be detected prior to explosions, during trafficking and also after the explosion by forensic spot tests and also by high-tech forensic analytical tools. In simplest term, we can define an explosion as rapid increase in volume and release of energy along with the generation of high temperature and release of gases. Due to the presence of organic compounds containing NO2, ONO2 and NHNO2 groups and others, an explosion is a spontaneous chemical reaction which is driven by great release of heat and energy. This type of explosion is known as chemical explosion. The chemical explosion is of three types, decomposition, deflagration and detonation. The chemical decomposition of an explosive is a slower process which takes place in storage. This may take years, days, hours or a fraction of a second. The chemical decomposition of an explosive is categorized in two types, deflagration and detonation. Deflagration is defined as the successive layer by layer burning of the explosive substance and only low explosive undergoes this process. In detonation of an explosive, it is propagated by an explosive shock wave transversing the explosive material. The shock front is capable of passing through the high explosive material at great speed, 
typically thousands of meters per second. Detonation takes place in high explosives. The explosives can be classified on the basis of composition, velocity, sensitivity and physical forms. But broadly explosives are of three types, low explosives, high explosives and miscellaneous, which we can further divide into homemade explosives, nuclear explosives and others. Availability and cost, sensitivity, sensitivity to initiation, velocity of detonation, stability, power, performance and strength. Resense, density, volatility, toxicity, explosive train, oxygen balance and chemical composition are some of the important characteristics of an explosive which are very important to determine whether the explosive is suitable for a particular use. There are some important rules which an investigating officer must keep in mind for evidence collection. Few of them are mentioned below. Make sure that there are no suspected devices. Use aerial photography. Use wire mesh screens to collect post blast residues. Do not handle potential explosives yourself. Clear and secure the area from unauthorized persons. Call the bomb squad. Use bomb disposal suit. Always photograph the item as found. Always note the evidence and its location. Do not restrict to a limited area of blast scene. Always wear latex gloves to collect evidence. Search far and wide from the epicenter. Always use suitable and unused containers. Always label properly. Always change gloves between collecting different items. While collecting different evidences, clean tools must be used. Remember to store evidences in a safe location. Also remember to maintain the chain of custody. Size of explosive does not matter. Collect suit deposits. Interview the witnesses. Search for explosive device or bomb fragments wherever possible. Next type of evidence is ballistics evidence such as firearms and ammunition. The range of evidence in firearms related cases can be as small as a piece of a bullet fragment which has rifling marks or as large as hundreds of bullets and cartridge cases and numerous firearms. A firearm is a portable gun being a barreled weapon that propels projectiles due to expensive force of the gases whereas ammunition may be defined as a propellant and projectile or anything that can be used in combat including bombs, missiles, landmines and anti-personal mines. A ballistics expert is a forensic specialist who is responsible for collecting and analyzing ballistics related evidence which includes firearms and ammunition. The ballistics evidence which may be encountered at the crime scene may include firearms, spent cartridges, spent shell casings or bullets, shot shell weddings, live ammunition, clothing, etc. Firearm evidence collection. Firearms evidence can be recovered in a number of ways and areas. Crime scene professionals discover firearms from the scene of shooting and sends them to the laboratory. After conducting proper documentation and photography of the crime scene and firearm evidences such as bullets, bullet fragments, cartridge cases, etc. are generally collected and sent to the laboratory. Bullet evidence can also be obtained at autopsy or in an emergency room setting. In these cases, the sample should be marked as a biohazard and then sent to the laboratory. Each laboratory has written procedures for packaging and submitting evidence. Bullets, slags that do not strike a person are often embedded into a nearby surface such as wood or drywall. This evidence is best gathered by cutting out a section of the material and submitting it to the laboratory to allow a firearm examiner to carefully extract it. This prevents adding or destroying any markings that could be crucial to identifying or matching the suspected firearm. Next step is analysis of firearm evidence. 
a well trained firearms examiner should perform the evaluation and comparison of this evidence. The marks left on ammunition may help in determining which firearm was used to fire the bullet. From the bullet fired to calibers and rifling patterns, it is possible to identify the characteristics of firearms. Cartridges and cases are analyzed to search for signs of firing pin impression, ejector marks, extractor marks and other tool marks. Even from small samples, information can be developed to indicate the type of firearm that has been used and possibly identify the actual firearm that was used. Other firearm evidences that could be found at a shooting scene includes short shell wads. These can indicate the gauge of the shotgun. Wads and pellets can be gathered and preserved in the same manner as bullets and cartridge cases. By examining wadding materials, the examiner may be able to determine the gauge of the shotgun, the manufacturer or marketer, a range of possible shot sizes based on impression in the shot shell wad, individual characteristics in some cases. Now we will end this module with the summary. Discovering, recognizing, examining, collecting, recording, identifying, packaging, conveying, and storing, exhibiting, and disposing of physical evidence are the few steps in processing of physical evidence collected from the crime scene. Various types of physical evidences encountered at the crime scene such as blood, semen, saliva, documents, explosives, firearms and ammunition, fingerprints, DNA, skeletal evidence, petroleum products, plastic bags, plastic, rubber and other polymers, vehicle light, wood and other vegetative material etc. Blood is a bodily fluid in animals that delivers nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic waste products away from the same cells. Potential details regarding the crime scene can be obtained from blood evidence which can support the investigation. DNA, proteins and cells are the important components of blood which allows the laboratory to perform examination. Semen is an organic fluid that may contain spermatozoa. Semen is secreted by the sexual glands and other sexual organs of male or hermaphroditic animals and can fertilize female ova. Seminal stains are usually encountered in sexual offenses and when the perpetrator is a male. The seminal stains may be found on the body of victim, clothing, rags, beddings and on other sources also. All the stained material under suspicion should be recovered carefully. In order to avoid cross contamination of evidences and to prevent their loss, each item should be separately packaged. All damp seminal stains should be air dried. The location of moist seminal stains on the evidences itself must be marked. Use clean paper, spread it under the item to catch any kind of debris which may be dislodged during the drying process and between items hanging next to each other to prevent cross contamination. Avail assistance of forensic staff to recover the stains in case when semen stains are on any object that cannot be easily submitted to the laboratory. Human saliva contains 99.5% water and 0.5% of electrolytes, mucus, glycoproteins, enzymes and antibacterial compounds. Saliva stain evidences are usually found at cigarette butts, gum surfaces of envelopes, chewing gum, bite marks, ski or nylon marks, etc. Submit the object intact if the saliva stained object is transportable. If it is not possible to transport the stained object, example bite mark on a body, then moisten a sterile cotton swab with distilled or tap water. Shake the swab to remove excess water, gently swab the suspected saliva stain and allow the swab to thoroughly air dry prior to packaging in a paper envelope and seal. 
select an unstained area in order to collect the negative control and collect the sample in the same manner as the saliva stain. This swab will serve as a negative control. Section 3 of Indian Evidence Act describes document as document means any matter expressed or described upon any substance by means of letters, figures or marks or by more than one of those means intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of recording that matter. Document can also be described as anything bearing marks, signs or symbols which conveys message or meaning to someone including traditional paper documents, things like graffiti on a wall, stamp impressions or covert markings hidden in a written letter among other things, etc. A question document may be a sheet of paper bearing handwriting or mechanically produced text such as ransom note, a forced check or a business contract. A forensic document examiner conducts examination and comparison usually for handwriting and signatures, typewriters, photocopiers, laser printers, inkjet printers, fax machines, check writers, rubber stamps, price markers, label makers, printing processes, ink, pencil, paper, alterations, additions, erasures, obliterations, indentation detection and decipherment, sequence determination and physical matching. Generally there are three stages in process of handwriting examination. Excellent eyesight, hand lens, stereo microscope, electrostatic detection device, video spectral comparator, docubox dragon, docucenter, Raman spectrophotometer, etc. are the tools for document examination. An explosive material also known as explosive is a reactive substance that contains a great amount of potential energy that can produce an explosion if released suddenly usually accompanied by the production of light, heat, sound and pressure. An explosive is a substance, may be an element, a compound or mixture which is capable of exerting pressure on its surroundings on explosion or the transformation. The legitimate use of explosives include blasting rocks in cases of mining, explorations of oil fields, spacecraft and satellites, for construction purposes of roads and railway lines, etc., in fireworks displays and maybe also in case of military explosives. The illegitimate use of explosive includes blasting bombs, which cause heavy loss to life, property as well as to the integrity of any nation and is severely punishable under Indian Penal Code, Explosive Act and the Explosive Substance Act. RDX TNT, TETN, ANFO, dynamite, etc. are few examples of explosives. Explosives can be detected prior to explosions, during trafficking, and also after the explosion by forensic spot tests and also by high tech forensic analytical tools. An explosion is a rapid increase in volume and release of energy along with the generation of high temperature and release of gases. Due to the presence of organic compounds containing NO2, ONO2 and NHNO2 groups and others, an explosion is a spontaneous chemical reaction which is driven by great release of heat and energy. This type of explosion is known as chemical explosion. Decomposition, deflagration and detonation are three types of chemical explosion. The chemical decomposition of an explosive is a slower process which may take years, days, hours or a fraction of a second. Deflagration and detonation are two rapid forms of chemical decomposition. Broadly explosives are of three types, low explosives, high explosives and miscellaneous which can be further divided into homemade explosives, nuclear explosives and others. Availability and cost, sensitivity, sensitivity to initiation, velocity of detonation, stability, power, performance and strength, presence, density, volatility, toxicity, explosive train, 
oxygen balance and chemical decomposition are some of the important characteristics of an explosive which are very important to determine whether the explosive is suitable for a particular use or not. A firearm is a portable gun. Being a barreled weapon that launches one or more projectiles often driven by the action of an explosive force. Ammunition is a propellant and projectile or anything that can be used in combat including bombs, missiles, landmines and anti-personal mines. A ballistics expert is a forensic specialist who is responsible for collecting and analyzing ballistics related evidence. Firearms, spent cartridges, shell, shell casings or bullets, short shell wadding, live ammunition and clothing are the ballistics evidence which may be encountered at the crime scene. Firearms evidence can be recovered at shooting scenes by crime scene investigators and sent to the laboratory. Bullets, bullet fragments, cartridge cases, short shell wedding, etc. are normally collected individually after proper documentation or photography and then sent to the laboratory. Bullet evidence can also be obtained at autopsy or in an emergency room setting. In these cases, the sample should be marked as a biohazard and then sent to the laboratory. The marks left on ammunition may help in determining which firearm was used to fire the bullet. From the bullets fired to calibers and rifling patterns, it is possible to identify the characteristics of firearms. Cartridges and cases are analyzed to search for signs of firing pin impression, ejector marks, extractor marks and other tool marks. Wads and pellets can be gathered and preserved in the same manner as bullets and cartridge cases.